Let's now move on to the security measures for ensuring data confidentiality. As we've said, the first security measure developed was WEP. A WEP key is indirectly used not only for secure data, but also to authenticate computers. An access point doesn't decrypt frames it can't decrypt. If the frames were encrypted with an incorrect WEP key, they will be rejected. What are the flaws of the WEP technology? One of the fundamental rules of cryptography is that one key should not be reused frequently. The more often you use the same key, the less secure it becomes. The web standard doesn't define any solutions for automating key generation. If you wanted to change a key, you'd have to do this manually and separately for each computer. As a result of this, keys are rarely changed. The encryption used in the web standard is weak. The process can be seen in the picture below. It's necessary to calculate the checksum of the packet first. It's an ordinary CRC checksum, not a cryptographic hash function. This means that the web protected packets are vulnerable to tampering. An attacker can modify the content of a frame and forward it by calculating the correct checksum. The checksum is added to a sent packet. We've mentioned already that this is not secured in any way. The RC4 stream cipher is used for encryption. We'll talk about this cipher at the end of all modules. The secure use of the RC4 algorithm is based on the rule that the key shouldn't be used more than once to encrypt the same data. If this rule is flouted, Breaking the ciphertext is trivially easy. RC4 is based on XOR operations. Let's leave aside cryptographic details for a moment. The same data is exchanged repeatedly over the network. This transmission doesn't relate to people visiting the same website. It's about packet headers having a set structure. Predicting field values of the headers is very easy. Given this, randomization was required to improve security. In this case, randomization is provided by the presence of an initialization vector, IV. Unfortunately, it's just 24-bit. A 24-bit IV is too small. This doesn't end the list of problems, though. We'll return to that soon. When an IV is used, Data stream has to be mapped with a key stream. The exclusive, or XOR, is used for this purpose. The end result is a ciphertext, or the encrypted version of a packet that we send to an access point. Key length depends on a web version. It can be 64-bit or even 256-bit long. Even if the key is really long, it can ensure the security of a network on its own. This is due to a small number of initialization vectors. There's only 16,777,216 available IV values in the pool. The problem is that the risk of repeated values, the risk of collision, is much higher than it would seem at first glance. It's enough to capture more or less 5,000 packets for the risk of finding two packets encrypted with the same IV to be over 50%. And having the same vector equals having the same key, because as we said, WEP doesn't support dynamic key change. This means that we've managed to capture data encrypted with the same key. All it takes now to extract nearly full information on the key is to combine the ciphertext using XOR. Implementation of this weak security mechanism is even worse. The standard doesn't specify the entities responsible for generating IVs. This has to be done by a network card. How? The standard doesn't say. Initially, network card manufacturers used the following system. One was for the IV for encrypting the first packet. Two was for encrypting the second packet. 
three for the third. It was highly predictable. This means that there can be attacks that consist of assuming a specific value of a vector. You can also encrypt data, but not encrypt headers. In that case, an attacker is not only able to capture physical addresses of the client he's eavesdropping on, but he can also modify them. He can control the packets transmitted in this network. We've talked about the potential problems connected to adding up checksum to packets. This issue will be noticed, for example, by Corec and others. If we add a checksum to an encrypted packet, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the checksum bits and the ciphertext. By modifying any checksum bit, you can determine the validity of any part of the packet. The checksums will or won't match accordingly. An access point rejects the packets that have an incorrect checksum. This is a basic mechanism for maintaining reliability of data sent over wireless networks where there's a lot of interference. You can modify a ciphertext byte by byte. Modify the checksum and see if an access point rejects the packet. This will help you make sure whether or not you have correctly cracked the valid combination for the key for each part. The RC4 algorithm is vulnerable to revealing certain relationships between the key and IV. How can all of these problems be solved? Don't use WEP to start with. Look at the alternative solutions. 